Today we are hacking a serious CTF full of interesting hacking techniques. Let's get started. If you're interested in learning more about these techniques, if you are interested in pursuing an ethical hacker career, then I encourage you to head over to academy.thehackerish.com. There you will find online courses that you can enroll to and just find a suitable course for you. It should give you a great start. Hello everyone, welcome to this new video, new challenge on rootme.org, a platform I like to play CTF in because I don't, it doesn't require any setup. I'm not a sponsor, I just happen to love the platform because it helped me in my earlier years of learning ethical hacking. So today we're targeting the Basilic or Basilic, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, challenge. The description says a Python developer has put a website online. Your goal is to compromise the different users of the server and gain root privileges. There are four flags to retrieve. They are in MD5 format, flag one until flag four. These are some hints with, which are quotes from known famous authors. So the host name is this one. Let's copy it. Now, because we know there's a website online, I suspect there is something on port 80 or any higher ports. So in my terminal, I created a folder for this challenge. And the first thing I want to do is uh, look for that web server. So I'm going to use nmap to find exactly the right port. Open and verbose mode. Because we are in room 12, that would be ctf12.remain.org. Okay, let's give it a try and see what we get as uh, ports. Hmm. It says here that the host seems down. So let's use dash capital PN to force the enumeration. So essentially the host is blocking pings, but with dash capital PN, we force nmap to talk directly to the service to the server and here we have 22 and port 5000. Now this 5000 seems interesting so let's give it a, a try on the web browser because this might be the Python website. That would be ctf12.rootme.org. Oh, sorry, I forgot to add the port number 5000 and we land on Basilic home page there's nothing really here apart from contact me, which points to contact.html. And we have an email and what seems to be the public key that we could we can use to encrypt our message and send it to the email. I think that's just a dummy email. Nonetheless, I'm going to copy that public key. It could be handy in the future. So let's call it key.pub and paste in our public key. Let's move on to other parts of the application. This is what we call application mapping. So essentially trying to discover all the application's features. Since I don't see anything here interesting apart from the contact.html, I'm going to see if there is like something in the source code, the HTML code rendered by the web browser. We see nothing here. What about known files dot HD access? Ooh, what do we have here? An editor. Okay. No such file or directory. OPT web server. This is the absolute path. I guess this is the web root and this is what we've introduced as payload HD access. So the path is uh, actually getting evaluated using this Python file, Basilic dev website. Cool. Which is also hosted on the roots directory because that's APT, um, OPT web server is here as well. So we can safely assume that the uh, Python script is also here. So let's paste it and hopefully we can get the source code directly. Oh, okay. So that's the source code that's getting evaluated 
server side, not the client side. <clears throat> and right away we have first flag this MD5 hash. Cool. All right, let's uh, do some code review here. We are importing some uh, libraries or modules and we can safely say that this is an application written in Flask, a popular Python web framework. And here we're defining the slash root, which is nothing but this function that returns the file index.html. And if we send a path that's part of the argument here of the load page function, if the path equals JSON JSON underscore calc, we take the query string, that's any parameters that we send as part of the get query. We put it in X and then we empty any buildings, removing all buildings for, for security. Okay. Seems like we need to do some kind of uh, jail escaping. And this is locals, I guess, because after that we are using exec. And this is a Python uh, function that that's taking the X, which is nothing but the uh, Python code. So this is really interesting. It's like a command injection vulnerability, vulnerability here, but we're, we're, we, we need to play with it a little bit to see how it works. And we have the globals and then the locals. This is how, this is the calling routine of the exec function. And then we return something to the user, JSON uh, formatted, not sure what we get here, but it's essentially just a JSON object. And if there is an error, then we print that error as part of the JSON file or JSON response. And if there is no JSON, JSON calc in the path, then we're, we try to open the path itself that we provided. But I can't help but notice that there is a concatenation here without any validation of the path, which makes it vulnerable to uh, path traversal. Okay, and then it returns that file and likewise, we have an exception that says 404 if the file doesn't exist. Hmm. So the first thing I am uh, interested in is this path traversal vulnerability. So now if I send something like this, watch, I'm going to duplicate that tabs just so that I have the source code in a dedicated tab. And here I'm going to use uh, JSON calc. Well, actually not JSON calc yet. I'm going to try uh, path traversal vulnerability and try to read the etc passwd. Mm -hmm. What do we have here? Oh, no such file or directory. And this is our file. But we didn't want that. Actually, we wanted the um, dot dot slash. So essentially, this is what happened here. This is the response that response we've had. So, okay, let's try with this time some encoding. So URL encode the slashes is essentially percent to F and we're going to repeat that multiple times and then ETC pass WD. Look at that. That's really cool. We learned that there's a user Basilic and a bunch of others. Okay, cool. Uh, in the next video, we're going to dig deeper into those two features, mainly the seemingly command injection vulnerability and then a path traversal to see if we can find anything that could give us a foothold on the server. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. It really helps me grow it and you'll get notified whenever my videos go live if you hit that ring bell. Until next time, stay curious, keep learning and go find some bugs.